In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a simple systemd service that will execute your script automatically. First of all, we need to create a base script. So I'm going to use Veeam. Then let's create in the user bin directory. Uh, let me say this will be my script. The name will be my script.sh and press enter. You don't need to be very good at by scripting because the script that I will create will be a very simple one. So let's start. I'm going to go to the insert mode. The first line is Shebang. So it is used to specify the interpreter with which the given script will be run. So I'm going to say that in our case, we're going to use bash shell. So I'm going to use bin, then bash. But of course, you can also define other shells. For example, you can define zsh. So if you have a z shell, then of course, you can just define it here. But in our case, it will be bash. However, you need to keep in mind that providing the interpreter is not mandatory because if you don't provide the shell interpreter, the script will be run by your login shell. So whatever shell you are using. Anyway, let's continue. The next step, let me just give some comment here. So I'm going to say that this is just a simple script to demonstrate, let's say, the service functionality. And that's it. Now we can type our commands. So we're going to use two very easy commands. So it is just print commands. I mean, echo command. So we're going to use echo. Then let's say uh, it says hello there. This script is managed by the system D. And then we can print the current date and time. So I'm going to use echo current date and time is now we have to provide the variable as you know that we have one command date so if you put this dollar sign here so it will be interpreted as the command it means that you are running the date command in the terminal something like that so basically that's it so this script will simply print the current date and time i'm gonna save the file Okay, under user bin directory, we cannot create file. At least we need sudo access. So I'm gonna just copy all the content here. Then we're gonna use sudo. And let's paste the content and let's save the file. Now I would like to check the permissions of this script. So I'm gonna use user bin my script.sh we have read and write permission for the user we have read permission for the group and read permission for others in order to run the script it should be executable therefore i'm gonna make it executable for all so i'm gonna use change mode plus x it will be applied for all i mean users group and others and then we need to provide the path of our script so it is user bin my script.sh Okay, again, we need sudo access. Now let's check the permission one more time. Yes, right now we have execute permission for all. Now let's run this script. I'm going to say user bin my script.sh. Press enter. Okay, our script works. Here is the output. It prints current date and time. Now it is time to create a systemd service to run this script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file under etc systemd system directory because as you remember in one of the previous videos I mentioned that if you want to create custom unit file you need to create it in the etc so I'm going to use vim then under etc systemd system we're going to create our file so let's call it date and time service pay attention to this extension as well so it should be that service anyway let's press enter first of all we need to provide the unit section type unit and let's create a description 
So description you can simply say that let me call it date and time date and time service for example and you can also provide documentation they are not actually required but it's better to use it documentation so I'm gonna use my website so https two dot slash slash bugix.academy academy and then we have this after statement actually our service is very simple and doesn't require any specific unit that will be started before this service however for the sake of demonstration let's just say that the service will be started after networking interfaces are enabled so i'm gonna say network.target that's it then we have another section which is service and here we are gonna start from type so type will be simple it defines the execution type of the service actually so in this case it is set to simple which means that the service will run in the foreground then we have to provide the start command and simply we are gonna use our script so user bin my script sorry my script dot sh and also I'm gonna put bin bash here so bin bash basically it means this bash shell will run this script and then we can also define our restart policy sorry restart I'm gonna say on failure basically it will restart the service when it fails and then we can also set the restart time the restart sec let's say will be 60 seconds so the delay between restarts will be 60 seconds and I believe that's it we have only this install section let's just type it install actually before install I would like to show you some best practices so the best practice when creating the service you need is to set a special user and group for the service it means that the service will be run under a specific user and group that's why I'm gonna set or I'm gonna define our user and group here so let's say user will be date and time but you can choose whatever name you want but that's reasonable I think we can just write date and time and then group also will be date and time okay that's all and in the install section we have wanted by I hope you remember run levels so I'm gonna use multi user target multi user dot target okay that's pretty much it actually let's save the file so two dash wq okay again under etc we need to use sudo to create the file let me just copy all of them and I'm gonna use sudo here and let's paste all the content save and exit now we are gonna check the stats of the service so I'm gonna use system ctl then status then if you type date and put dash and then if you just press tab two times it will auto complete because systemd is really smart that's why if you check the stats of the service it will automatically detect the new service let's press enter okay the file is loaded from this location so basically it means that the unit file has already been processed and the active is here it shows inactive which means that the unit is not running currently and here we have also documentation by Kistat Academy anyway let me start the service so I'm gonna use start and it requires sudo as well let's check the status okay it seems it was not successful do you know why I guess you already know why it was not successful but you can easily check the logs to see what went wrong so we're gonna use journal ctl journal ctl then provide the u option and then you, you need to just type the service name 
date and time that saves press enter okay we forget the l okay seems our service is failed because of the credentials which means that in this file let me clear the screen so under vim etc vim etc system d system and we have date and time so here we just defined user and group but actually we didn't create this user so that's why we need to create it actually i made this mistake because i want to to show you the restart option because in unit file we defined the service will be restarted after 60 seconds right if the service fails so let's see if the service is restarted automatically so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna exit from here and we're gonna use this journal ctl command one more time let me just make it a bit smaller okay i think it's better so as you see that the service is started from here we started the service and it failed actually and after one minute exactly one minute the service is restarted again as you see that it says restart counter is at one and of course it failed again after one minute exactly so it is 48 the service is restarted again so restart counter is at two and then three and then it will continue until the service will be successfully started i believe now you understand the meaning of restart option anyway let me just create these users make it bigger so what i'm gonna use is i'm gonna use sudo then user add i'm gonna provide the m option so m option specify that the home directory should not be created for the user because this is typically used for the system accounts that do not require a home directory and then i'm gonna provide this r option so i think you remember this option this creates a system account which is primarily used for running services or demons so system accounts are typically created with non-human readable user id and are restricted from the direct login and then the last option will be s so this option sets the login shell for the user and in this case we're gonna use bin false because it's a spatial shell that immediately exits upon login and effectively disabling any interactive login for the user this practice is commonly used for the system accounts that do not require any interactive shell and the last one will be our username so it will be date and time actually you can create whatever name you want i mean the username but you need to define it in the configuration file of the service anyway let me press enter provide the credentials let's see that it is created so i'm going to use date and time sorry okay uid is user id is 977 and group ids as well the group is also created it is date and time and another best practice is to change the ownership of the script to this user date and time user and group so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna use change ownership and then we're gonna use dates and time user and date and time group as well and then provide the script pass so it will be user bin my script press enter sorry we need to be sudo user okay and then let's check the permission so lsl yes the user and group owner of the file is date and time okay now it is time to start the service one more time so but before that i'm gonna use systemctl daemon reload because i want systemd to reread all the configuration files press enter provide the password it is complete now we're gonna start the service so i'm gonna use sudo systemctl then start date and service press enter since it is restarted let's check the status
okay we didn't get any errors and it was successful and you can also see the bash command already printed these lines so basically it was successful and also you need to keep in mind that bash executed our script and when the script exits the service will be stopped basically it will be inactive let me make this screen a bit smaller because i would like to show you one more thing okay now i would like to explain what disabled mean here so basically if your service is disabled then it means that when you reboot the virtual machine the service will not be started automatically if you want the service to start automatically during boot time you should enable it so to enable the service we are gonna use system ctl enable and the service name that's it press enter sorry seems i'm just a typo okay seems i just made a mistake let me try one more time okay now it's complete and let's check the status again so here it says it is enabled all right that's all about this video the systemd service that we created was a really simple one but if you want to create other services as well you can read some of the articles on my website where i already added some of the tools as a systemd service for example if you read this prometheus one you will see that we just installed and downloaded this prometheus node exporter grafana and added those tools as a service like all the steps are shown here but anyway i hope you find this tutorial very useful bye and i will see you in the next video